Hi y'all, Robert here again with uh, Rivet Structure Training Exercises. So today we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at adding openings in the beam. We're just going to cut some holes in some beams. Brief exercise here, and then we're going to try to look at slope beams if we have time permitting. So the first thing you want to do here, we have this 3D view. I got this file from a small uh, Rivet Structure and documentation. So we want to go to our 3D cube, and let's go to front. Come on, okay. So we're zooming this area right here. And once we're here, we have this beam placed here. So let's go into our um, structure tab ribbon, and let's go and look at by face, opening by face. So we select that opening by face command. And then we'll go and we'll select the beam. So you'll notice it's selected by the green um, box around it. So then we have a draw panel and we'll select a rectangle in the draw ribbon. And we'll just draw it right about here. Well, first of all, let's do, uh, we need to go into our options bar because it's prompting us. Whenever you see that green, you want to do something. So here, let's make this two inches depth. And then we'll go and activate our radius to two inches as well. Okay, now we can go in here and let's draw our rectangle. Just place it right about here. And let's make this two foot six by let's just go two foot six first okay now we can do some measuring here so let's go in here and let's just look at this line here and let's just draw a, a, a line dimension if it lets us it does in this view so let's change this to on the move command, let's just move this. Sorry, you just did modify to get out of that thing. Let's make this eight and a half. Okay, so we got to open this eight and a half inches, and then we want to measure. Let's make this. Let's go from the bottom of this flange and go here. It's got four and a half inches. Let's just make this four inches. So what we can do here, we can just select this guy and move it down an eighth of an inch. And just key in one eighth of an inch. And there we have that. So now let's look at this other um, dimension from this point, from the edge of this column to here we want to make this 111 so we're going to drag this out of the way and let's just select this guy and move it three and three quarters of an inch So that's, there we go. Those are the dimensions we want. So we have that done. And let's click the green check mark. And it's finished. Let's look at this in 3D view. Okay, that's one opening. So let's go back into our front view again. Let's create a few more. I like to modify to get out of command so it just seems to work a little faster and better. So now let's go in and let's do our um, structure tab again. Hit on by face. And let's do a circle this time. Let's put this circle out here with, you know, you select the thing that we want to use. Then we'll go to the circle command. And with this circle, let's activate this the radius and let's give this a, a, a radius of six inches so 
we'll go. We have, we already got our circle already ready to go, and it's just dropping in. And we'll worry about the dimensions later. We'll just place it right about. Um, let's put it right about here. And we can do some aligning, I think. No, I can't. I can't. So I'm going to take this guy and I want to make this um, this distance 15 inches from the edge of here. Measure that center point. So let's move this back a bit. So we can just select it. And we can just say right here, 15, 6. And there's that dimension. Now, we want to bring this down a bit. To measure this distance, we can, I, I think we should, no, I don't think I have a center point to align it. So, I'm just going to move, nudge this down a bit. Well, we can measure it down based on the uh, center point here. So let's just go from here. Mm, this point. There's my center point. Let's just move this guy. You can call this anything you want. So let's make this. Doesn't matter. Let's make it eight inches just to bring it up a bit. Not 86, eight inches. And then we'll click the uh, green check mark to finish it. And then we have another opening in here. So now let's just do one more. Um, let's go back to our front view, which we are in. And we go back to the shaft opening, I mean, uh, opening by face. And we'll go, and this time, we'll set our radius to one we selected. Options by radius will be one. One inch. Enter. And we'll draw our um, our next open let's say four feet from this one we've got to do some aligning here and some measuring So line this one, this top line with that. Let's finish it. I don't see our radius here, so let's go back and edit this thing. Is that that small? No. I'm gonna redo that one. Sorry folks. Let's just redo this one. I'm going to delete that out so you can just delete it just that simple. Let's go to structure tab, open by shaft, by face, select the beam. Uh, we want to enable our radius. Yeah, we had it at one inch. It didn't have to do that over. It just was so small we couldn't see it and just go from this point. And let's make this one, uh, let's make this. Three foot six. I'm just hoping it'll be three six. There we have it. Now let's do some aligning to match this one. We'll finish it. With the green check mark. And there we go. 
The radius is mighty small. I can't barely see it. So let's go on our 3D view. Let's actually measure this over. Let's get us a distance here. So let's make this four foot distance so we can go to our line dimension. So we can still move this guy. I hit the edit sketch command. I probably didn't have to do that. Let's just go in here and do a line dimension. From here to here. Let's just grab this whole thing. We want to move it. Let's just move it three and three seven eighths. Three and three seven eighths of an inch. And we'll click finish. And it's uh oh, it's moving one more eighth of an inch. Sorry. Three eighths of an inch. And there you have it. There's our openings in a beam. That's basically how you do that. Very simple, straightforward. I'm looking at it in 3D view. And there are openings. Uh, it works the same way in precast. Now let's look at something else here. Let's go and create a sloped beam system. So uh, I want to add sloping. So let's go in this elevation 3 here. And this elevation, um, we want to activate our structure and we go to beam. And then our properties over here, we want to go and work plane by name. And we'll say this is going to be grid 0.5. And we'll say OK. Now we want to select the 18 by 35 beam here. It's going there. Yep. So here in the type options bar, we got grid five, which is what we want. And we want this to be automatic. And we want to keep, we want to disable 3D snapping. And we want to have tag one placement highlighted because we want to tag these when we place these. So in grid A5, want to just go to this cross section and let's drop this down one foot. And then we want to drag the mouse over to the center point of A and place the point right there. So there's our beam placed. Now we have that beam in place. So now the next thing we want to do is, um, and it's sloped, let's go into our first floor. Now we're here in our first floor. So let's just zoom over here to this location. Zoom here between A1, A, and A.5. And we want to select the beam again. And this time we want to select the W12 by 26. And we want to have tag on place we selected. So we'll go here at the, this point right here. It will stop to when it says nearest. There it is. We'll place this beam from here. And we'll go to grid to here. I'm sorry, we don't want to place it there, cancel out. We want to place it from this point, from the edge of the of the slab. So we go from this to this point. 
and there's our beam on placement. Now next we want to start from the exterior wall on this side. Let's cancel out of that. We want to start on this exterior wall from the nearest and drive a point to here, to this intersection. And there's that being placed. Now let's go in and activate elevation three. And as you can see, there's our beam. So now let's zoom in and see just what we placed. We placed a beam here and here. So now let's uh, select the beam on A5. So let's select this beam right here on this on this grid line A5. And in the properties panel, where it says end level offset, let's make this minus one. Okay. And we'll go to our Okay, so that's good. So now on A, we'll do the same here. Have our end level offset. This is upside. Yep. A little ticky here. We'll select this beam. And this will be minus one as well. Okay, now let's go and let's straighten this out. Let's go into our canopy section. Canopy systems. And now there's that beam. So now we can adjust this. Now you see it's minus one here. It gives you the dimensions. You can just tick this guy. Uh oh, sorry. Let me undo that. You can select this. And we can call this end offset minus one. And there's our slope beam. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, we got these different beam sites. You could use the same sizes if you like, but uh, that's pretty much how you do that. So uh, let's just zoom around and make sure it looks pretty good here. Yep. So it's just a matter of changing the the elevate the end and the beginning offset. Let's look at this in this section view. This plan, this view over here. In there. So that's it. That's how you do a slow beam, folks. And uh, thank you for watching this video. So we covered beam openings and slow beam. So thank you for watching this video. Any questions, please answer. And uh, if you want, please subscribe. If you subscribe, it helps me out a lot. And I can do these every day. Thanks for watching. Bye.